वेलकम बैक विल कंटिन्यू विद द नेक्स्ट टेन क्वेश्चन फॉर योर जी एस पेपर थ्री टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन पेपर सोल्यूशन नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन हियर टॉक्स अबाउट द बजट एज यू नो एवरी टाइम डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली यू हैव वन क्वेश्चन फोकसिंग ऑन आइदर बजट और इकोनॉमिक सर्वे सो दैट इज समथिंग टू बी कवर्ड इन डिटेल वी हैव कवर्ड दैट थ्रू द वीडियो लेक्चर सो वी हैव द वीडियो लेक्चर फॉर द यूनियन बजट टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन एज वेल एज फॉर टू थाउजेंड एटीन वी हैव इट नाउ वी ऑल्सो हैव द इकोनॉमिक सर्वे फॉर टू थाउजेंड Again becomes important for your this year's paper. So for 2017, the focus was transform, energize, and clean India. What were the things that were basically taken into account? First was for under the clean India, you had demonetization, you have GST. That was the focus. Under uh, the transformation, we have ease of doing business, abolition of FIPB. That was the sole aim. And under energizing, we were talking about merging the thirteen uh, oil firms to create energy uh, supply for the nation. And we were also working towards hybrid uh, issues or the hybrid cars. So those are the three things that were basically the focus of the Union Budget 2017. Very very important. And uh, the main of the U uh, Union Budget we have covered through this. Just so just go through that, and if you have any doubts, you can put those in the comment section. The next question is again very very important. Industrial growth rate has lagged behind the overall growth of the GDP in the post-reform period. Now, what we need to understand is understanding the economics as pre-reform period and post-reform period. That's before 1991 and after 1991. So after 1991, what actually happened was there was a good thrust onto the service sector. As a result, the percentage of GDP from the service sector was nearly 57 percent. However, from the manufacturing, it was only 25 percent. So that was one of the reasons. The second reason was lack of the development of human resources. More labor-intensive industries were seen, and you had a lack of entrepreneurship with uh, labor laws that were not relaxed or a kind of stringent labor laws that were seen, which pushed back the growth from the industrial sector. However, under the new industrial policy that came uh, post 1991 or during 1991, we were working towards more competitive uh, atmosphere. We were working towards development of uh, entrepreneurship. abolition of uh, uh, the various issues that were related to labor laws or liberalization of the labor laws we focused on make in india stand up india start up india projects we also talked about technology adoption and innovation we focused on gainful employment three pillars for the economic infrastructure which talked about boosting the uh, growth from the industrial sector as well and bringing in much more competitive industries which could compete at a global or a international market with foreign firms so those were some of the aims that we were focusing on the next question talks about the salient features for inclusive growth has india been exper experiencing such growth process analyze and suggest measures for inclusive growth now india is definitely working towards an inclusive growth when we say inclusive growth it's not just the growth in terms of numbers or gdp we are focusing on empowerment we are focusing on enhancing the social capital bringing in much more environmental stability or a kind of sustainable development that could be seen gender equity is another important aspect that we talk about under inclusive growth so the poor section the weaker section the marginalized section should be brought in line with the Uh, other classes is something that we need to work around so good governance reducing the poverty development of the infrastructure giving a thrust to the social capital social issues are some of the things that we focus on and that's something that could bring about a definite change in the inclusive growth policy that we have so here we have some of the statistics that you can have a look onto the handouts and work around this for your answer uh, similarly to boost this what are the kind of projects that have come up so you have the minegra scheme that's there the janni suraksha yojana the national rural health mission and so on so, so those are some of the projects that have talked about inclusive growth if we talk about as as of now we talk about the three social security schemes we talk about the schemes like ayushman bharat so all those would be part of inclusive growth then we talk about the financial inclusiveness where we talk about jandan scheme the lpg the ujwala yojana under which we talk about the subsidized lpgs so that's again part of inclusive growth the next is 
what are the major reasons for declining rice and wheat, wheat yield in the cropping system now this is mainly due to the climate change a very important reason we had uncertainty in the monsoons as a result the development that could be seen is pushed towards not a kind of monoculture practice that was seen for wheat and rice production but by a diversified cropping because of the climate change we have seen rise in the coconut production and steep decline in the production of rice and wheat the reason being they cannot tolerate a wide variation in the temperature or rainfall so uh, besides that the other factors are the uneconomic land holding small land holdings marginalized land holdings uh, decline in the soil fertility due to the green revolution and the impact of the uh, fertilizers that was seen so that's again one of the major areas however there is a lack or a stagnancy in the research and development which has also affected this system sometimes we talk about overuse of fertilizers overuse of uh, urea and uh, decline in the water table is another one of the major issues what has been done to match it is mainly intercropping diversification working towards horticulture of uh, development of more production of fruits and vegetables the next question talks about how do subsidies affect the cropping pattern the crop diversity and the economy of the farmers and what are the significance of crop insurance minimum support price and food processing so we have to explain how due to subsidies uh, we are able to procure more seeds bring in more fertilizers for the farmers and enhance the betterment of the farmers we are talking about the fasal bima yojana here we are also focusing on diversifying the crop bringing in uh, as we said the fasal bima yojana much more uh, kind of stability in the life of farmers we do focus on providing a minimum support price for the basic crops that the farmers would be uh, sowing in and to promote this we are working towards a uh, push on or a thrust on the use of fertilizers for that the central government has provided a fertilizer subsidy in 2017 18 it was around 70000 crore which was considered as biggest subsidy after a food subsidy on a fertilizer program the next is we have to account for the nuclear science and technology in light of the fast breeder reactor program as i said a very very important topic it's again important for this year as well so nuclear science development of fast breeder reactors and the benefits the major benefit would be it is a cheaper fuel cleaner fuel uh, india's gdp the energy use and value of each watt is some of the information that is given uh, india is a source for a lot of production of thorium through the monzonite monazite uh, sand that is seen across the kerala coast we have the major production that's again seen in andhra pradesh tamil nadu and odisha which have potential thorium reserves so india definitely have the reserves and therefore we have the stated advantage for the same the efficiency of the reactor can be increased up to 80% if the waste water used can be uh, used to desalinate the water for the process of heating similarly we have the various nuclear power plants that have come up so tarapur was the first one that was based on boiling uh, water reactor which used enriched uranium and later on we started commercial operations we also have various indigenous projects like mixed uranium plutonium oxide which are uh, using the fuels in the prototype fast breeder reactors at kalapakkam so those are some of the developments that we need to address again a question related to climate change so we had the question on monoculture uh, that is the wheat and the rice that was indirectly related to climate change and a direct question on climate change again so climate change again becomes very very important so for climate change just refer these two videos uh, the basic reasons being the irregular rainfall or the impact of climate change could be addressed as irregular rainfall water log log logging in certain areas famines in certain areas floods in other areas so droughts and famines uh, in contrast to the floods would be one of the way of explaining the climate change melting of the glacier leading to increase in the water table 
Ultimately, you had the ocean water that's uh, increasing. As a result, submergence of the islands would take place. So those are some of the things that we need to address under the issues of climate change and how the coastal states would be affected. Definitely, due to the submergence, it would be the coastal effects uh, states which would be affected first. So we need to artificially work around the issues where you could rise the uh, rise the level of the land in order to uh, reduce the minerals that could be caused due to the climate change at a very initial go. The next was regarding the tsunami and the NDMA guidelines. So every time you have one question from NDMA guidelines, this time also assume a question from NDMA guidelines. Uh, this could be from let's say uh, uh, flooding issues. So flooding or drought could be one of the major issues this time. So this was in light of the tsunami that took place. Now why tsunamis occur? They could occur due to earthquake due to volcanic eruption that has taken place or any nuclear and uh, sea test that could take place. So those are some of the factors that lead to tsunami. Now under the NDMA guidelines what we are working around is early warning system. We are talking about better communication systems, a preparedness for NDRF, a good state of the health conditions or the roads in the region, a good infrastructure uh, development, community preparations. So how ready is the community to face any such natural disaster or natural issues along with that once you have any natural disaster that affects a region you have psychological distress that occurs among the people so psychological support system is something that's very very important niche of the ndma guidelines for each of the natural disaster that they are trying to uh, mitigate or work around avoiding any kind of construction in the low-lying areas and this would be again true for the issues of flooding so rehabilitation to be addressed but that's again in the future so ndma guidelines is the preparedness before an event can occur so rehabilitation is something that we focus uh, either once the event has occurred or we could say okay these are the low-lying areas which could be affected or which could be worse affected so working around people in that region should be our priority so those are the things that we need to issue uh, address the next question was on mob violence this was in light of the mob lynching that took place recently what are the causes and consequences of such violence so the causes is there is lot of intolerance among the people sometimes the people are not afraid of what they are doing or they could be uh, or the fact that they are breaking the law they are moving against the law they have a very strong communal sentiment which they just want to bring out there is lack of awareness and uh, sometimes for personal motives even the higher authorities motivate such kind of acts so those are some of the major causes we have seen those across the various mob lynching that has taken place in up again you have una village that is one of of the uh, important examples that we need to talk about then what are the consequences consequences is definitely affect on the life and property affect on the security of the people the common men who are doing their jobs uh, issues of riots can arise so defense and security becomes one of the major concerns division of the society can take place on communal li rights lines and this could take place or lead to what happened with the division or the partition of india so those are some of the extreme consequences that we need to address and the last question was on terrorism so what is the idea or what are the solutions that you talk about curbing the issues of terrorism and what are the major sources of terrorist funding now the idea is when we are talking about terrorism there are certain things that we need to understand the first is we need to stop the militant groups we need to dismantle the existing bases that exist the tyranny that's there must be stopped by any means the organizations which are supporting them should be checked out and sometimes these develop a kind of independent organizations for profit and the profit from that organizations would go into illegal activity that is terrorism uh, sometimes law enforcement can be a good way of checking that out and uh, demonetization was taken as a step to check out this terror meanings and the funding that goes into terrorism so when we talk about sources of funding definitely black money is one of the major sources you have donations and charity now in the uh, islam you have zakat which is a compulsory proportion of the earnings that has to be given as offerings or uh, as charity and that sometimes illegally goes into these terrorist fundings 
Sometimes you have the front companies which basically operate their legitimate business uh, for profit and that money from the legitimate business goes into the terrorist funding or the terrorist organizations and the various illegal activities that are promoted in line with those. So those are some of the general outline that we have provided for paper 3. We'll be talking about paper 4 uh, that's your ethics and integrity a very important topic and also for that we have covered the NCRT class 12 psychology chapter 6 which deals with attitude formation of attitude which is a very important part to be covered for your ethics so just don't miss that uh, cover that carefully a very important topic for you have a great day ahead we'll be bringing in many more topics